You know, as wood turners, we're always looking for ideas, and I saw my wife using this wonderful looking piece of plastic the other day to make her coffee. And I thought, I can do one better than that. So I made this for her. It's a nice, elegant coffee scoop. And the cool thing is, is this volume in here is the same as the volume in there, so it's the same mix. It won't be any stronger or any weaker than what she's used to making. Now we're using maple and walnut. And so I've got this two and a half inch thick piece of quilted maple. And I got some marks on here already. I was testing it out. I've got my caliper set to one inch. So I'm going to make a two inch circle on here. There we go. I'll make the darkest part. <laughs> anyway, that's going to be the bowl or the scoopy part of our scoop. And then over here, I've got my walnut and it's about an inch thick. And I want to make this about, oh, six inches long here. So I can have a little bit of wood to play with on either end. And since this is about one inch thick, I'm gonna make a mark here and make a mark here. And so now I have my blanks marked out and prepared for going to the band saw. If I can just get that line there, there we go. Now my bandsaw has about a half inch blade on there, so I can't make that tight radius. So I'm just gonna kinda take off the edges, so to speak. So when I put it on the lathe, I don't have a lot of wood hanging off, and I can trim it up pretty easily. And I have to back it off and make a couple cuts on this. There we go. Get this out of the way. And now we're just going to chop these edges off. It doesn't have to be perfect because it'll wind up being round <laughs> after a while anyway. And now for the handle. The first part we're going to turn is going to be the scoop and we want to mount it between centers. So I have a live center in my tailstock here. I have a little stub center right here. Yeah, we have a lot of room to play with here. So this doesn't have to be perfectly centered, but hey, you know, we're all cheap frugal and want to save money and not use up all our wood. So we'll make sure that we have it somewhat centered. That looks pretty good. I'm going to lock that in and that's on there. Now we're going to bring our tool rest up. And in this case, I want to go to a, see how I'm hitting the headstock there? This is a narrower thing. I'm going to change out my tool rest and go to a smaller one. So it's not as wide and I can get it up closer to the wood as I'm turning. So bring that up here and I want to rotate this by hand because see it's out around. So bring it back a little bit, do that. I want this to be a little bit below center when I lock it in and all I'm going to do is rough out this blank and then we're going to put a tenon on it. Now surprisingly with that little bitty piece of wood I'm going to grab my big old roughing gouge to round it out. Make sure the lathe is down to a low speed, nothing's hitting the tool rest. Bring this up and start spinning it. That's nice. Okay this is a uh, curly maple so that means that the grain runs in a lot of different directions. So I could use a bowl gouge on this. I could use a spindle gouge. But you can see little chips of wood will flip off every now and then because of that crazy grain. So that's why I like to use a roughing gouge because it's less likely to bounce around with the wood being out around and having all those weird edges coming at you. So my goal here is not to be pretty. It's just to get down to solid wood to where I have a cylinder. Moving my body from left to right. I actually have the tool resting on my leg right now and so I move as a unit here. So I'm not using my fingertips to do this. I'm using my whole body. Now I just rotated the tool just a little bit to get a fresh edge again so I can get a clean cut. And this is feeling pretty good. I think I'm on solid wood most of the way through. And like I said this doesn't have to be pretty for this step. We just want to get a good round surface going. And that looks good. And you see there's a little flat spot there, but that really doesn't matter right now. 
What I do want to do though is make a tenon on here so I can hold this in my chuck. And my chuck over here, when it closes down, it's about an inch and a half. So I want to make my tenon an inch and a half or a little bit wider than that. So then I can put it in there and grab onto it. So the easiest way to start roughing out a tenon is to grab your parting tool. Turn the lathe back on. Nothing's moved so I don't have to check the tool rest. Got the speed going there. Come in here and start making this cut. I'm letting the bevel of the tool ride as it goes in here. And I'm kind of eyeing this in to begin with. And I'm starting way off on the end in case I mess up. I have wood left. So I can actually hold this with one hand, put this caliper up here, push in, and then when I hit the right diameter, there, the caliper slips over. I don't need a very big tenon either, so I'm going to make this about 3 8 of an inch or so. So we're going to come in here like so, match up that line. Now since my chuck has dovetail jaws, I do want to make the tenon dovetail shape. So I'm taking my uh, big old parting tool that I've cut at an angle like that. I also took some of the metal off the side here, so when it cuts, it's on this tip and right here on the side. This side's not engaging the wood, so it makes it easier to make this cut. And then you simply come in here and you're going to do a little bit at a time. And there, I'm making the tenon like so. Can you see? And I'm also angling the tool a little bit to go in that way because I want the outer part of this to sit on the jaws, not the inner part right here. I want this outer edge to touch the jaws and that makes a nice, strong hole. Now we're ready to mount this in the chuck and what a chuck. This is uh, the Easy Chuck, made by Easywood Tools, who make carbide cutters. And I gotta admit, these guys were thinking hard on this one. One thing I like is, is you know how you have your jaws way too wide and you gotta take the Allen wrench and screw, screw, screw to get it right? Now this has a speed set in here. See how that does that? So I can take this up here and with the speed set, dial it in really quickly and get it to latch down on the jaws. But one other cool thing, if I ever have to change the jaws out, Check this out. No screws, no nothing. I can change these jaws out in 30 seconds where it would take me five minutes or more with my older chuck which had eight screws in it. And so you gotta do that for eight jaws. You gotta pull four off and put four on. But anyway, let's get this mounted in here. Use that little speed ring. And then take this, take our Allen wrench right here and we close it down. And see it's a nice tight fit. There's not a lot of gap there, so I have as much metal on these jaws touching that wood as possible. This thing is not coming off of here unless I do something extremely stupid. <laughs> so we'll take our tool rest, bring it over here, and we're going to clean up the outside edge of this a bit because I do have some torn grain right here. That's where it chipped off that wild grain we were talking about. Lock that down. That looks pretty good. Get my eyes on here, and I'm going to grab, actually this time, a large... Uh, spindle gouge because you can use it just like a roughing gouge to take off some of the wood. I'm going to bring this down to a nice finish now. So we've got nothing hitting. Got the lathe at a nice speed. Bring this up. I love the way this lathe ramps up. It doesn't just bam jump into gear. It goes slowly so if there's anything wrong you got time to catch it. Anyway, we're going to make contact with the wood and just bring it across and clean this up. So again, just like a roughing gouge, I've got the tool handle into my hip and I'm just leaning my weight from left to right. I'm shifting over to my right foot. My weight is actually where I want to wind up. So when I'm here, that's nice and comfortable. I kind of corkscrew back this way. I'm exaggerating now. And then I move all the way back and bring myself like that. And that's how you make a nice clean cut by moving your body like so. Anyway, a couple more passes and we're going to be ready to start hollowing this out, I believe. I'm going to grab a little round carbide tip scraper here. I'm going to turn this on and I'm going to start hollowing this out. Now the important part is, is that we only hollow out enough so it matches that scoop so we have the right serving of coffee, right? I'm going to bring the speed up here a bit. Um, but the neat thing is, is this plank of wood is so long right now we can take out quite a bit. If we go too far we're just going to take some of the end off and shorten the edge of the scoop. So I'm using the carbide tip and I'm just running it back and forth. And you see it moves wood pretty quickly. And I'm not going for pretty right now. I'm going to make a final pass once I've got my depth right. 
and that'll clean up all the torn out grain. Now one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave this wall a little bit thicker than I did on the other one because I noticed once I was finishing rounding this out, there was an inclusion. We had a crack in the wood. Now I could have just got another blank of wood, but actually I think that crack is kind of pretty, so we're gonna leave it in for artistic appeal. So anyway, we're doing this uh, like so. Now, I don't want to go too crazy on this, so I'm gonna stop right there, pull the tool out, turn the lathe off, and we're gonna grab our little Allen here and loosen this up, take this off, and we're gonna come over here. This is gonna be the fun part. <laughs> I was trying to figure out how do I measure the volume of this, and if I use coffee, that was going to get messy. So what I'm going to do is take my scoop and some ball bearings. Of course, this might get messy, too. <laughs> there we go. Okay. That, whoa, guys. That's how much that would hold in coffee, right? Pour that in there. And look at that. We're really close. I just have to take that down a little bit more. So I'm going to put this back on the lathe, and let's see. What am I going to do? Here, I'll put these in here. That works. <laughs> when I first did this, I dropped the thing of BBs on the floor, and that was that was a lot of fun. Now, the jaws will make a mark where it grabs on here. Since these jaws are symmetrical, I don't have to mark my number one jaw, but I'm looking for the little crease that's in here. You can't really see it. I'm going to mark, match it up there so I know it's going to pinch back in the same manner it did before, and this won't be out around at all like that. So we'll put that up, hang that up, and let's see. Yep, get our round hip scraper again and just go a little bit deeper and then we'll take one more measurement and then we'll clean up the inside. And you can see we're looking pretty good there. We got the right amount of uh, metal coffee in there. <laughs> Pour those out and let's put those back up before we kill anybody. <laughs> okay, um, there's that inclusion I was talking about, the crack. I guess there's a little branch there in the wood, and that caused that little bit of weakness, but if you look inside, it's not there. And so I've got a good finish in here. It's ready for sanding. So let's go ahead and put this back on the lathe, and what we're going to do is start turning the outside of the scoop. So I can bring it up and just tighten it in there. <laughs> Lefty, righty. It says close on there. You think I'd be able to read that? No. <laughs> That's why they put it on there, just for me, I bet. Okay, close, open, right. Okay, so we move our tool rest back around over here. I'm going to bring it in to where it's just shy of touching the jaws. Bring it up a little bit right around center. And I'm going to grab a smaller spindle gouge this time because I want to make some nice shapes. And <laughs> why this might look great on camera. I really can't see the wood, so we'll see what sort of shape I make here. <laughs> do, not, uh, do not take this stance in your own shop here. <laughs> I want to thin out the lip quite a bit because it's going to scoop, right? So you want the lip to be nice and narrow where it goes into the coffee so it can pick it up without having a problem. But I'm also making like a bead here. So if I look over here and under here, I'm going to come this way. And actually, one important little measurement I need to get here is the depth of this piece right now because we have to attach a handle to it. And so I'm going to do it the cheap way. We take our tool, put it in here. I'm going to bring my thumb up so I can look right at the edge. And I'm going to come here. So right there is the bottom of this piece. And if I had a pencil on me, I'd mark that. But right here is going to be the bottom then of the whole uh, scoop because I'm going to drill a hole into here that's going to uh, take the handle. So I'm looking good right now from what I can see. <laughs> Kids, don't do this at home. I want to have a nice curve to this and I want to make it look. <laughs> if you're beginning, do not stand like this. Um, I want to make it flow. This, this is going to look a little bit like a pipe. When my wife saw it, she said, that looks like a pipe. It's not a pipe. It's a scoop. But you get the idea of the shape you want. So we're going to come down here. We're going to continue this curve just a little bit. And we're almost to the point there. I like that. 
we're going to go ahead and drill the hole now. Now, we need to drill the hole, and we want to make sure that the hole does not go inside of the scoop, right? Now, if you also notice, my handle is going down at an angle because I like that. It makes it a little more artistic, and at the same time, when you're scooping, it gets it into there better for you. Also, when you set it down, it doesn't want to roll. So I like that a lot. Um, so we're going to take this all, and I'm going to, again, check my depth here. So right here is the bottom of my scoop, and but it's fairly thick, so I actually can drill right there. And I'm going to take this all and push it in to make a really good starting hole for the drill bit because I don't want it to uh, wobble around when I'm drilling. I want to clean up drill as possible. I'm going to engage the... Um, the lock here so I can lock in the, uh, oops, not there, bring it down to here. I'm gonna lock that in right there so this doesn't rotate while I'm drilling. Now, I've got a quarter inch drill bit here and I've made a mark about a quarter inch deep so with the tape so I'll know not to go any deeper than that. So that right there is, get this out of the way, is <laughs> straight. So I'm gonna come back just a couple degrees like this and just in your mind, Envision that handle coming out and how it looks. Also, want to make sure I'm straight that way. Just gonna start slowly here. There we go. Go in. Now, I'm doing this before I'm sanding, right? Because you're gonna get a little tear out in the grain as you drill that hole. So I'm gonna come back and make a couple more passes with the gouge now and refine this shape, take off some of the weight of it, and then I can sand out any of the marks and clean up the lip on that. So we can bring the tool rest back up. This is where it was before in the height, so we're good there. Gonna bring that in. I'm gonna go back to my little spindle gouge, make sure everything's working good. Gonna turn this back on. And I can kind of see the hole now as I'm turning. It's right there. So we're gonna come in here and engage that hole to clean up the lip on it. And now I know I can take a lot more of the bottom of this off because I know where I've drilled the hole. And so we're going to refine our shape and make it a lot lighter and not as heavy feeling. Lean my body. It's in making a bead. And as always with a bead, you sneak up on it, take it off a little, take the wood off a little bit at a time. And take your time too, because one thing is you can never put wood back on. Ooh, I like that. Every time I make one of these, the shape changes just a little bit. This one looks a little southwest. It's kind of cool. Now with it sanded, we're gonna grab our parting tool. There we go. Then we're gonna part this off. I'm not too worried about how the bottom looks on it right now because we're gonna use a sanding disc to clean that up. I just wanna make a nice clean cut in here. Whoops, gotta pick the speed up. I had it slowed down because I was uh, sanding. You don't wanna to go too fast when you sand because you can build up heat and clog up the sandpaper. I'm going in, I'm moving the tool over a little bit so I don't get it to catch. If I don't make a little clearing cut there, the tool can bind sometimes. I'm going to leave that little nub on there because I don't want to tear out the grain in the bottom. I'm just going to part this off. I'm going to grab my hand. It doesn't burn your fingers when you're touching it, as long as you hold it lightly. There we go, and it's off. So, turn this off, and that's our little scoop right there. Got the inclusion. It looks kind of nice, doesn't it? And then I've got the hole there where we're going to put the handle. So I want to go ahead and lock the uh, spindle right here for a second. And I'm going to pull my chuck off because I have to mount the handle between centers. Move this off here. There we go. And put it over here. And here's a piece of wood for our handle. And I'm going to grab my step center again. I want the little spring tip in it. Move all this over here, put this up so I don't stab myself <laughs> like I've never done that before. Yeah, and trip. 
<laughs> and bring the tool right, the tailstock up. And I'm just going to eye this one in. I don't have to be very careful about how dead center this is because this is going to come down a lot from the inch diameter it is right now. So I'll put the walnut on there like so. Bring this up a little bit more. Lock it down. Advance the quill. Just lightly make contact and see if it looks good. Yeah, it looks pretty good. It ain't art at this point. <laughs> so we're going to bring the tool rest up again, and I'm going to turn this before I log it down to make sure we're good. I'm going to lower it a little bit, and once again, we're going to go back to our big old roughing gouge because this is a spindle turning. The grain is going this way, so I can use it. If the grain was coming towards me, I'd be using a bowl gouge. So we're going to turn this on, see what speed we're at. Looks good. And I'm just going to round this down to probably a little bit less than a half inch. So put the tool on the tool rest first. I'm starting over on the end. Lean my body, start making a cut. The walnut turns beautifully and it's really one of my favorite woods to use. So I'm going to rotate over this way and come back to this end and work over here. Part of turning is having a little bit of patience and not trying to remove a whole lot of wood at once. When you start going at it really rough and hard, <laughs> you wind up making mistakes and design modifications. Now that that's pretty smoothed out, I can start from this end and work my way the whole length of this spindle here. And I'm using my fingers in the tool handle as the depth gauge right now. So this finger is riding up in here and there's a nice good place for my hand to rest so I can pinch this. And for those of you with larger hands, these guys make really nice tool rests. Robust does it really deep, so you can put your whole hand up there and still make good contact. And all my thumb does is it pinches the tool and pushes down on the tool rest as I make this cut. Now I want to get this down to almost the finished diameter, but not quite, because the thicker I leave it, the stronger the piece of wood will be while I'm turning the spindle. Now I'm laying out the marks for the design on my handle. The first thing I want to do, though, is to cut the tenon and make sure I have that done, and then I'll start working my way back. So I'm gonna grab my parting tool again. There it is. <laughs> and I have my caliper set to the diameter of that drill bit. So we're gonna come in here and remove some wood. And I'm gonna start off closer to the uh, live center here. And I'm gonna pick the speed up again a little bit more because this is a really small diameter. Because now, I'm starting off on this end also because if I make the tenon way too narrow, I've got a little extra wood to play with there. But that looks nice right there. So I'm going to walk my way back and match up with that. Come here. Okay. I'm going to take one more measurement to make sure I'm good because if it's too wide, it's kind of a pain trying to get it sanded down to fit inside that hole. If it's too narrow by a little bit, I can fix that. Okay, now we're going to start making the shapes on the handle that I have, and I'm going to grab my small spindle gouge, and I'm going to bring this diameter down a bit, but I want to mark it so I don't lose my marks. Whoops, skated a little bit there, like so. Okay, so I know where I am now. Bring this like so. Okay, and I'm going to make a little tiny bead right here, and I'm just breaking the edge just a little bit. Whoops, I got a catch, tail, it tip hit, and went back. So let's take that down a little bit more. It's called a design modification. Okay, come in here. There we go. So we got a little bit of a bead started there. Come in here. Delineate where that part of the bead is, right? And we had another bead right here, like so. I'm going to come back and roll the tool. Now this is a lot of right hand control when you're doing this. The left hand is kind of hanging on to the tool, but it's the right hand that's helping you make these corners and shapes. So that looks good. Make that one just a little bit narrower. There we go. I do want this flat right here though because it's going to butt up against the scoop and it's got to be nice and flat. Now I'm going to start working my way back here, making this shape. Looking at my shape on the handle I made right now so I know what I'm doing. And I'm going to work my way back towards the headstock, creating this shape. You don't want to go back to the, you don't want to start out here, you want to start here because it will get really shaky on you fast if you narrow this down too quickly. So anyway, start working our way back and making the handle.
Okay, I've got the handle shaped just about the way I want it. So a little bit of sanding. Then we'll take it over to the bandsaw, nip the ends off, and put this scoop together. I'll just put a little dab of wood glue on here because I don't want to use a cyanoacrylate because this might, might get a little brittle after time. This will hold up well though because this stuff holds on like crazy. I'm going to put it in the hole there, spin it a little bit so I get good contact. Then all you have to do is clamp this for about 20 minutes or so or maybe hang on to it. I'm not sure how you clamp that. <laughs> but anyway, uh, mineral oil is what I put on the finished product because that is non-toxic and it's easily refreshed. And so you wind up with a beautiful coffee scoop that'll make your significant other or yourself very happy. Hope you enjoyed this project. Until the next time, keep clamping and keep turning.